Hello my soccer universe. First things first, unfortunately, right when the draw for the Europa League happened around the time my laptop broke down and I was not able to do any videos except for short videos, which uh, really put some stress on me and so short videos it was for the round of, um, you know, the playoff round and the draw. I hope this was kind of sufficient. I tried to make it as full as possible situation is about to get resolved uh, this weekend and I'll be able to make more normal videos again at least for the European uh, matches I want to do that and what a Europa League evening we had yesterday um, the Champions League was honestly meh it was in such a degree that uh, I mean I almost missed the big one because I said okay the Wednesday matches are not that great Europa League it was edge of your seat we had 31 goals in eight games one goal more and we had we would have had exactly four goals per game it's an um, it was amazing action there and there was the chances there to have more goals there probably should have been more goals especially looking at the Wednesday game in Lisbon where there were four times the woodwork was hit we also had that all Italian teams, and for the Serie A fan, this is a very uh, good to see all Serie A teams are in a good position to move on, uh, but only Roma are secured. And yes, for the short video on this round, I was wearing my Milan shirt. Honestly, I think Roma deserved that I wear their shirt. Roma is exciting me again. And I'm so happy to see that Roma, uh, I mean, the 4-0 against Brighton, which we will talk uh, a little bit more in detail soon, was maybe a tad too high because Brighton was, especially in the first half, well in the game. But they were, Roma was always good on, on the three season, always attacking and very, very brutal in uh, finishing their chances. And this Roma side is completely invigorated and also rekindled my love for Roma because what I saw on the Mourinho, yes, the European runners were great, but it was not pretty watching. Now you actually can go there and I'm not yet crying for De Rossi to get the job, but I think he fits very well with Roma. There's everything about this is at the moment absolutely great. Milan on the other side, uh, yeah, you got a two goal lead going into the second leg. You had a three goal lead against the Rennes. Uh, but the defensive frailties and having a man advantage for two-thirds of the game and still conceding two goals a man down this is what worries me I always said this against Lazio uh, they were men up and I always felt that Lazio could score so yeah we'll see about that uh, maybe the only downside of this Europa League evening was that there were many decisive scores I mean, we had Roma winning big, we had Liverpool winning big. I don't want to count Milan yet, but we also had OM winning big. So uh, quite a few ties already done and dusted, but still, it was rather exciting. Let's jump in. We go back to Wednesday, where Sporting faced Atalanta again, because they faced, they faced each other in the group stage. Back then, Atalanta got a 2-1 win at Sporting. This time, it ended only 1-1. Uh, but it could have been so much more. Paulinho uh, gives Sporting the lead. However, then Atalanta twice hit the post within a minute or so. I mean, it was two the different attacking phases. One of those was Kamaka, who then makes good on his miss when the goalie comes way out. He controls the ball nicely. He doesn't have a great season, honestly, but gets the goal and uh, gets the equalizer. They hit, the, I think it was the crossbar in the second half again but also sporting does does the same atalanta score also a late goal that was called for offside i think atalanta still a tad better than sporting although At atalanta after the good phase in the league a little bit kind of teetering at, at the moment but maybe the europa league is exactly what they would need roma against brighton this was one of the, a little bit of an overlooked duel but i think exactly what the doctor ordered in many ways i mean first of all the Zerbi and de rossi not only are good friends i mean uh de rossi was hospiting at the Zerbi when he made his uh coaching license their kids are roommates and they are united through the uh, roma fan club in london and you could see it in the opening embrace they really really like each other which it's a good feel a feel good story <laughs> the game was everything but feel good for the Zerbi uh, Roma yes they had a great chance through Lukaku but then Brighton was well in the game and probably should have scored one or, or, or two goals but what Roma did I mean the way Paredes sent Dybala who was not on the side rounds the keeper it's 1-0 um, and uh, survives the VAR VAR check 
up and down and then a big mistake by a defender Lukaku takes the ball off him runs on to the on his own goal and uh, 2-0 and that more or less settles already the game but I think if this would have been a 2-1 for Roma at the half would have, or 2-2 even would have been more reflective of the game Second half, I mean, within 10 minutes, uh, El Sharavi twice assists, first Mancini, uh, defenders, first Mancini, then Cristante in the 64th and 68th, it's 4 0 Roma. Auto destruction in the end, although one has to be said, as I said, I think a 4 2, I would have felt this was a little bit more reflect. But again, this Roma side is exciting to watch. And this was, was a Roma side that just a month ago, or maybe just before Mourinho was sacked, you could not watch a Roma game. It was so bad. Really exciting stuff that De Rossi has pulled up and I think he's earning a lot of credit. I don't want to say earning a lot of credit back because, I mean, he is a Roma legend, but earning a lot, lot, lot of credit and a lot of goodwill at the moment. I think Roma is just not handing him the job because of the social situation with United, but I think think this should stay i think it just fits so well overall uh we almost had a big upset but <laughs> leverkusen's streak was about to come to an end in karabakh they just barely escaped that one uh who was the last team to beat by leverkusen you're right roma in the europa league last season in the semi-final in the home leg so it goes back that long but uh, benzia and juninho had gave karabakh a 2 0 halftime lead and it's only then, around the 60th minute, and really the cavalry, I mean, uh, Jao Belanzo put like a B plus squad out, if, if you would like. He brings Frank Pong, Shaka, and Wirtz. And Wirtz, just 12, 12 minutes after he goes on, scores a beautiful one. I mean, he's running on the goal, he lobs him. Uh, Wirtz is really a great player to watch, it has, has, has been said. But Karabakh were about to hang on, and then Andre Kors and Schick in the 92nd win has it in. Leverkusen still not losing, still riding high. Yes, probably the focus is now on the Bundesliga to get that one over the line. Uh, however, I also have to kind of earmark for the Europa League and we have to see what the draw will throw up for them. Another side, uh, a side that I never really liked all the, all the much, but this time around Leverkusen, really exciting. Liverpool went to Prague and similar to the Roma against Brighton game, um, the game was relatively open. Yes, Liverpool had an early chance, then they get uh, Sparta give away a penalty that McAllister in the sixth minute converts. However, then uh, Sparta have quite a few, a few chances, they just don't take them. And Darwin Nunes in the 25th just takes a shot from far out. Uh, wonder goal, honestly. And then he does the same thing just, just, just before they have the 3 0 was not reflective of the, of the game. I think a 2 1 again would, would have been more. Uh, Sparta, though. Come right back after the half, a Bradley own goal. Um, but again, they don't convert the chances. Liverpool are ruthless. Uh, Luis Diaz in the 53rd, third is a three goal lead. A Salah goal who comes back, so maybe good signs in their big clash against City. Um, is this allowed for offset? But Soboschlei deep in Soboschlei makes it a 5 1 game over. I think Liverpool will uh, play the kids in the second leg which they honestly should and will now focus until the next game on to the uh, Premier League. Which leads us now to Milan. I don't remember being a little bit sold down after a 4-2 win. It was an exciting game. I, I cannot get past the fact that up until the 26th minute, Slavia actually had probably a little bit more of the game. And I did not like the jersey matchup at all. These those Slavia jerseys are not well. And, you know, Milan with black pants. Okay, beside the sign. Yes, Juve is getting sassed off, having a high high boot and hitting uh, Christian Pulisic really, really bad, badly. Yes, it's probably the momentum is carrying him, him through. And maybe it could be considered harsh. But I, I thought that it was all right overall. Now you're a man more against the team that you're high favorites against. Yes, in the 34th minute, Leao lies uh, cross in, Giroud has it in 1-0 and that should have done it. At that moment, Milan Schulz should run through. Yes, Dudera takes a shot from far out. And I don't know, uh, I think Mike Magnon, I mean, I was really high on the guy. I love him, uh, his pro personality and, and so on. But as of late, his goalkeeping is not that great. And yeah, he gets his hand handled, but it was a great shot by Dutera. Kind of a wonder goal. Okay, you'll take it. Ryan does. 
in the 444 does something similar. He looks at, at the goal he takes in the short corner, re-establishes me Milan's lead and just uh, two minutes later Loftus cheek heads in the Florenzi corner. Both uh, goals came after a corner by Florenzi. 3-1 and honestly I was expecting more of the same that Milan now will go forward and will uh, make it a proper scoreline, at least a three or four goal lead. Again, uh, Slavia come all credit to Slavia. This is a Slavia team that have given Roma quite some trouble in the group stage. So not a team to be um, uh, underestimated by any means. And I don't mean to do that. However, you're Milan. You want to win this comp competition. You're a man more. You have better players. But you have defensive frailties. And Schranz just came, came, came on and yanks it in after, after the car. It's 3-2. Yes, in the 80, 85th minute, Leao dances through the defense, lobs it in seemingly, but then Pulisic gets a touch, a touch on it. I'm not sure. <laughs> Leao was a little bit annoyed, I guess, with that one, because he would have scored a pretty goal, but I think Pulisic made sure that the goal goes in. But at least then make a fifth of, 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 of whatever. You could have settled the tie right there, although the way the game in Ren went, uh, even a three three goal is never safe for Milan. Maybe it just focuses them enough for the return like ne ne the next week, but I was not, I was not uh, convinced. The defensive fairness of Milan really, really frustrate me. This is not the way that you win a competition. Uh, frustrating also for Benfica after their really horrible, horrible week, losing a Sporting and losing big to Porto. Uh, and then you found the seventh, seventh minute already down through a Lawrence header against the Rangers when everyone said this is kind of the last chance. Yes, Benfica clawed themselves back in, in, in into the game. The penalty was a hand. Hands penalty was maybe a little bit um, contentious, but the, I guess the referee looked long, long enough at, at, at it. Then Butland, goal, the Rangers goalie makes a whole lot of shebang, gets even a yellow card, and then moves to early. And Di Maria converts 1-1, one, one, and you think going, going in, in, in the break, that's it. Nah. <laughs> Sterling, after Fabio Silva cross, reestablishes the lead just before. Again... Benfica, try the reserve, try work hard, and then it's an own goal. And when those two meet, there's always an own goal in there. It's 2-2. Uh, Benfica pushing for the win, but cannot get it. It's a good position for Rangers, to be honest. Um, Freiburg against West Ham. A little bit of a lucky win for Fre Freiburg through a late Gregory goal. First half, nothing to talk home about. Then it was actually West Ham having loads of control in that, that game. Um, trying to push for the goal but never really getting also too many shots on, on, on goal and then with one of few chances the Freiburg could, could create uh, Gregoric come on the self assessment is a shallow shot and everyone forgets about Gregoric who taps it in from a short distance and Freiburg hang on there was a little bit nervous sex against late in stoppage time where there was potentially a hands penalty but I think it comes from the knee onto the hand and so I guess it was the correct decision West Ham still should be considered the favorites another replay from the group stage and we'll finish it with a huge win for OM against Villarreal uh, Marcelino was Marseille coach and then left because he didn't like how uh, OM is governed and so on he did not from when I see he did not play a the full squad, so the focus probably more on, on, on the league and OM made them pay. Where the two, an um, Obama young penalty in the first half, always settled it to make it 3 0. Um, and Obama young in the 15th minute, a brilliant goal, a lob from very acute angle, similar to the one from Lille. So, probably the two best goals uh, in each of the competition come coming from French uh, teams. 4-0, I guess OM are through, and given that French teams did not have a good playoff round, they're on the way, both of them, to move on further. However, if you look at the overall favorites, it's pretty clear. It's Liverpool, Leverkusen, Milan, Roma, and then OM and At At Atalanta. I would say between the top four and at this moment, so far, I didn't never want to have Milan play either Liverpool or Leverkusen. I think Roma adds that mix. And there's also an Atalanta in there where they're not doing well. So I honestly think if Milan survive Slavia, they should. I'm not 100% sure. If Milan survive that, I'm not sure if they will make it past the quarters at, at the form that they're currently in. Whoever they might play. And maybe there's a little bit of a luck of a draw in there as well. 
But unfortunately for a team that is highly talented and probably should be considered among the top three favorites in the competition, defensively they're too weak and I don't think that Milan will go much further there. Uh, when we, next week, it's all turn, 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 turn around, I think the early kickoffs are potentially a teeny bit more exciting. Uh, Rangers against Benfica should be a cracking match. Slavia will pull it all on Milan. Uh, West Ham have to turn it around against Freiburg. So you are uh, looking forward to that one. Atalanta against Sporting was already a really good first, first game. I, I expect more of the same. Level Leverkusen will probably try to right the wrong against Kaka Karabakh. Brighton, uh, Roma is gone. And Liverpool, Sparta is also gone, I would say. In any case, I would like to also know from you how you saw the games yesterday evening. I really enjoyed that evening. It's always fun when there are many games, many, many goals. The only downer, as I said, Milan. Was not, I'm, they scored four goals and I'm not convinced. And that is, says it all. In any case, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. I'll talk to you soon about more stuff in my soccer universe. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!